Hello everyone and welcome to the Sunset Special. Thank you for joining us this week for, for our first of four celebrities who we'll be interviewing over the course of the next few weeks. This week our, we are proud to welcome Mr. Jack Johnson to our show. Thanks Johnny, thanks for having me. Jack, it's our pleasure. For all of you who don't know Jack, he's a really well-rounded man. He's a musician, songwriter, filmmaker, surfer, environmentalist, and family man. What we are wondering, Jack, was how did this all begin? Was your child? What was your childhood like? Well, it all started when I was born. I was born on May 18th, 1975. My parents, Patty and Jeff, had uh, had moved to the island of Oahu on the north shore, on the, on the north shore of Oahu in Hawaii, and they they moved there for the laid-back lifestyle that was common there during the era. And uh, my brother and I lived in that house for our whole childhood and we we learned to surf when we were really young because my father was a big surfer and he wanted us to learn how to surf as soon as we could so we could pretty much learn to surf before we could walk and I, everyone in the community always said that I had a zen-like connection with the water and the, and the ocean and the waves. I attended uh, Sunset Elementary School starting in 1980 and I was always an average student. I uh, I was especially fond of math and I was I was good at it because it came easily to me. But that was pretty much my childhood. Well, your father and environment gave you your love for the water. Tell us how your love for music came about. Well, surfing in school pretty much defined my life until when I was in high school at Kahuka High School on the North Shore of Oahu. I, I had a surfing accident and I severely injured my head. And when I returned from the hospital and wasn't able to surf, I picked up a guitar and learned a few Bob Dylan songs and Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young songs. And uh, that that pretty much began my guitar playing and musical career. My family didn't have much money, but we had enough money to afford a record player. And I'd occasionally go to the th I'd go to the, th the thrift store and pick up any Bob Dylan records or any records I could find. But a uh, big influence to my guitar playing came when my neighbors rent out their houses to f famous musicians from throughout the world and they would teach me little bits and pieces about guitar and about music and that helped me build an overall structure of music. You said surfing was a huge part of your life. What made you decide not to pursue a career as a professional surfer? Well, as I was a kid and I started surfing, a lot of, uh, a lot of chances came up for me and all my friends to become professional surfers and a lot of people a lot of surfers that came by told me that I had the potential to become a professional surfer and I had an aggressive style but and I for, for a little while I considered it being a thought but then I saw people go away and surf just for fame and money and to be popular and I didn't think that was what surfing was about and I didn't like that whole idea so I decided not to go into the field of professional surfing. Did you go to college after graduating from Cuyahoga High School? Well, I used my skills in math that I had since I was younger, and I got into the University of California, Santa Barbara, and at first I didn't like it there because all the people were really different from me, and they didn't have the same laid-back lifestyle that I had on Oahu, but uh, within my first week there, I met my soon-to-be wife, actually, Kim, and she was one of the only people that I could relate to and really ha have a good bond with. I was taking really hard classes at the time that I wasn't enjoying, like calculus classes and math. I wasn't enjoying, but I soon found a friend besides Kim, who had a lot in common with me, and his name was Zach Gill. And he, uh, we formed a band, and he's actually still part of my band right now. Uh, when I was in college, I met two of my closest friends right now, actually the Malloy brothers, who introduced me to the idea of combining surf documentaries and music together as a business actually and I, I really liked the idea and it really was popular to me and one night Kim brought me to the university's Real Loud Film Festival and the day after that I was so inspired that I dropped all my math classes and picked up filmmaking classes and before I knew it I was I was getting good grades and really enjoying the classes so it, it was all a good situation it was good. What did you do after graduating from USCB? Well Kim and I took a trip to Europe and we uh, got a truck that we drove around for for a few weeks and we pretty much stopped everywhere that, that the truck broke down so we got to visit a lot of different cultures and I got to learn a lot 
And then when we returned back to California and to uh, Hawaii, we actually went back to Hawaii. The, the Malloy brothers gave me a job filming their new surf documentary called Thicker Than Water. And I got to travel all around the world surfing some of the world's most famous spots. And we, I, I brought my guitar and I actually wrote a few songs during that trip, which appeared on one of my albums. But I, I loved every minute of it. It was such an awesome experience to be able to film them. I went back to the States and I, I edited the film and I found out that a few tracks that I had recorded for, for myself personally would become the soundtrack for the film also. So it was pretty much all my work for the film. And then after that was released, I had a few fans from the, from the soundtrack of the film and I was offered to make an album with a man named J.P. Plunier, but the Malloy brothers quickly gave me another job to film their next surf documentary called uh, The September Sessions, which was an, an incredible experience for me, and that was, that's what I did after that. Filmmaking gave you enough money to live at that point? Well, uh, after filming The September Sessions with uh, the Malloy brothers, I realized that filmmaking wasn't, wasn't giving me enough money to live. And so I decided I'd give my musical talents a try. And I worked with JP Plunier and we recorded my first album, Brush Fire Fairy Tales, in a, actually nine days. It took nine days to record the whole album and do all the work with it. The al album sold more copies than anyone thought it would. And I signed with U Universal Records. Uh, I signed with them because they were the only record company that agreed to not make me tour all the time and not make me give up surfing or filmmaking any of my true true loves of life. But after all the stresses from Brush Fire Fairy Tales kind of calmed down, I decided I'd work on my second album which was titled On and On and it was recorded in a in a recording studio at my house in Oahu which is right around the corner from my parents house and the house I grew up in. But we recorded my second album in there and the the recording went really well because we spent most of the days surfing and just enjoying it and then at night we'd re record when we wanted to so it was pretty much revolving around our schedule which was nice. The album was an instant hit and some of the songs were nominated for the Grammys and the Brit Awards which is the British equivalent to the Grammys. After a long break in my musical career the band and I decided we would record our third album called In Between Dreams and it was recorded in the same studio that we recorded on and on in next to my house in Oahu. The album In Between Dreams was recorded by a friend of mine named Mario Caldado Jr. This album was recorded after a long break in your career. Why was there a break? Well, I decided that I needed a break in my career because I had had enough with the music, the music business. And I really just needed time to go home to Hawaii. And I needed to surf and just relax with my family. I had Kim at home waiting for me who was always so patient with my touring, which I tried not to do. But I also had my newborn son, Mo Johnson, at home. And I wanted to really be a father figure in his life. And I wanted to teach him how to surf at a young age like I had learned how to. And I just wanted to play with him and raise him like, uh, like any normal father would raise their son. The break in my career actually uh, gave me ideas for some of the songs on my album, In Between Dreams. The, uh, the album name actually means In Between Two Parts of My Life which were before I had a son and after my son was born, which were two pretty big parts of my life. the most recent work you have done since the reasons of In Between Dreams? Well, my newest album, Sleep Through the Static, was just released a few months ago. And the album speaks a lot about a peaceful world and how to help the environment. And a lot of the proceeds from the album are going to charities and wildlife conservation centers throughout the world. I guess we're just going to have to see how this album goes, see if it's popular or not, but I'm sure it's going to be. Thanks, Jack, so much for coming today and being on the show. It was my pleasure.